Okay, we are drawing with the pencil tool in Illustrator again. And we have added in the smooth tool as an option. Or we can just kind of simplify the number of anchor points just by kind of brushing over what we drew with the pencil. Often it helps, but sometimes it can make it overly generalized. And remember how each time you make a new layer set, Illustrator assigns a color to the path. So unfortunately, this path is, is black, so I don't see it on my black very well. But I could, if I wanted, make a new layer and then move this path to that new layer, and now it's orange, and just get rid of that black, black line path. So there's all these kind of little quirks of Illustrator you get used to move this anchor point and I can adjust this curve. So even if you dominant, you know, use mostly one tool like the pencil tool, like I like to do, you want to know how to adjust anchor points as though you were using the pen tool. Then I can simplify things with the smooth tool. And I can even use the pen tool and delete excess anchor points. And this one I'm even going to convert using the pin tool and holding down option to convert it from a straight to a curve. Get that curve. Then I'm going to take this anchor point and move it in. So it's a sharp point. Move this one on top. So all these different techniques get used together to make good shapes, good vector shapes. Now when we're doing illustration, just like if you were drawing a cartoon or something, it doesn't always matter if you have slightly wobbly shapes or lines or details. But for logo design, this stuff can get really picky. An average corporate logo in the United States has a budget of around $100,000. And the reason they're so expensive is because they go through so many different versions. It's usually around a nine-month process to design a corporate logo. And I know because I've been on some of the, the selection and design boards And I don't want to be one of the designers that has to do 50 versions of whatever the, the committee last chose. But that's kind of how it goes. And it's about like just tweaking and getting all of this just right. So there's a huge difference professionally between professional logos and more amateurish logos. So when your friend wants like a company logo and they think it can be a produced really quickly, it's just the difference between sweating the small stuff and trying to get it right or not. Which of course we can't do in a introductory college course to this with only about a three classes to work on it. But it, it gets you introduced to the concepts. And I'm looking at this and I just want this curve to to buckle out a little bit more. So I go back to my pencil tool and I start on the path and I end on the path. And I can smooth out areas that need it. All right. I can also use the large selection tool and just slightly shape the whole thing. 
rotate it, move it. You're going for something that's better than your sketch, ultimately. I think I like that. You can make as many layers organizationally as you like. Now I'm going to move on to this cloud. Try not to round out the corners. Try to make an abrupt stop with the pencil tool. An abrupt angle change. And then closing the path fully. That looks pretty good. Now this one, kind of like the head with the moon was so tricky. This overlap in my sketch is kind of tricky. So sometimes simple things can be difficult. Just that little cutout. There's a few ways I can do it, but I think the most direct Let's see, is to add it on to this. So I'm going to redraw with the pencil tool from this shape. So I start on the path, continue drawing, and then I have to end on the path. And then I can modify, make it a little bit thinner. Actually, let's see, maybe I do want it thicker. Let's turn on everything. Let's turn off the sketch. Oh, I have an extra layer turned on I don't want. The blob brush layer I don't need. So that's what I've got. Now there's a little check you do before you're all finished. You just kind of look at all your edges. And I notice now there's a little bobble here that I want to fix. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to use the smooth tool, which again you can add to your toolbar. And that evens that out. Look at all your edges. Make sure there's no broken uh, anchors, ones that aren't connected to the full shape. That's going to limit what we can do when it comes to coloring it and finishing it off. Slow that out a little bit more. Ah, end on the path. Start on the path. Now I'll use the smooth tool. There we go. That could come to an abrupt point, but I kind of like how it softens there. I have plenty of abrupt points. Some of them could be a little bit smoother. Maybe you have to unlock things before they are able to be edited. You want to use a small selection so you can see where the anchor points are. Smoothing this out a little bit. Use the smooth tool. That looks better. Yep. This happens really, really often near points. It just gets a little wonky right at the point. So if you're being a real stickler, if 
I were your art director, I would make you fix all that. Get it really clean. Because once we have our black vector shape, that becomes a file that gets used over and over and over again. So any mistake that's built into it is just going to be repeated infinitely throughout the life of whatever that brand is. Okay. So I've got it. And I've got the sketch in the vector file, but I have it turned off. And then I have lots of, of layers turned off that I don't need, like the blob brush layer that I experimented with, the pen tool layer that I experimented with, the shape tool layer. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of those by dragging them down to the trash, ensuring that everything I have turned on is locked and safe. So the only, the only layer I have in, in my vector file that is not turned on is my sketch. And they are all locked. And I don't have any white shapes. I only have black shapes. And I have them merged together where possible. So not a ton of overlapping black shapes. And that's my finished logo. So I'm going to save it. I want to save it as... Let's do all three types of vector file format. So my favorite is the EPS, but we also want to save it as an AI file. That's an Adobe Illustrator file. When you double click on that, it will immediately open within Illustrator. Use all the defaults. Taking a little bit longer than I would think, but that's fine. Now, next we're going to save it as an EPS file. Well, no, next we'll save it as an SVG file. That stands for standard vector format. So save as SVG, not compressed, just regular SVG. Vector files are already pretty small. using all the defaults. Remember, SVG files are the type that you can load into vector.com and the type that you can save out of vector.com. And then my favorite type, save as an EPS file. This is the type that we can bring into Photopea or bring into Photoshop as a vector. So the EPS is what we're going to use to add color to this and to be able to post this. Because in order to post it to Canvas, you're not able to post vector files online. You have to convert them to raster files. So now we are all done. I can close Illustrator. Woohoo. And let me find those different files. I have the AI file here. That's called a working format. I have the EPS file here. That's the, tr the transferable format. And then I have the SVG file here. And it's interesting how they all look different. So when I double click on the SVG file, it's going to upload with the artboard and it's going to open in Illustrator. I don't think there is another program that could open it except for a web browser. So standard web vector graphics like SVGs can be opened in a web browser, sometimes can be loaded into them. And that's as much as you can zoom in on it. You can see how it's perfectly clean. But this is what we can load into the vector program. To upload. I take my SVG, you see how that's selectable where the others aren't. And now I've got a vector. 
all finished. 